Falsha Gunnarslag of the TEG Cusick Park. Ladies and gentlemen, you're very welcome to TEG Cusick Park here in Mullingar for the Top Oil Leinster Colleges Division B final between Kalasta Colum Astolomore and Kalasta Nukwara Askranar. It's a very, very wet and miserable day here in Cusick Park, but the pitch is in absolute immaculate order. This is a much delayed final, of course, because of COVID 19 and because of the restrictions that were held against it but it's great to have football back here in Mullingar and it's also great that these lads are going to get to play their Leinster final Kalashta Cullum will be wearing the red jerseys predominantly red jerseys and in blue is Canuckwa from Granard I'll give you over to my co-commentator here today Killian How are you doing Paul? Looking at uh, both of these teams of course they are here in TG Cusick Park coming into uh, action with uh, serious campaigns you'd have to say behind them in the semi-final Colossia Column defeating Casanoc by 4-9 to 3-5 and uh, having come through then against Arts Gultranodi of a tie by 3-8 to 1-10 and Port Leash CBS uh, by 1-4 to 4 points in the earlier campaign Canuckmer and Granard Paul we're going to expect to see a lot of free-flowing football from them you know, they've had uh, some big scores along the way in the league final against Dunshockland. They defeated them by 5-15 to 3-9. They scored 4-15 in the North Leinster quarter final against uh, St. Joseph's of Drogheda. They kicked 4-20 against Boyne Community School in the semi-final. And then a very tight game uh, between themselves and Ashburn Community College, 3-7 to 1-12. But still, some major scores. And from a Granard point of view, two men that we're going to be keeping an eye out, an eye out for. Caelan O'Reilly, middle of the field. Uh, Cavan Mann from Mullinahorn. He's definitely a man to keep an eye out for. And uh, Granard's own, Michal Hines. Uh, he uh, got a goal in the Leinster final, North Leinster final. He's a man uh, that might be able to pull a few strings in the side uh, line but the captain as well he's on the 40 he's a man Jordan Martin uh, that we will expect an awful lot of uh, for Colossia Column uh, well there has been a change in the team there uh, Daniel Fox has been replaced by uh, Cahill Ryan he's coming in wearing uh, number 20 Colossia Column a little bit unlucky they've lost two of their key men uh, one before Covid uh, Kieran Dolan was involved in a car accident and he suffered a neck injury he hasn't been back with them and you know we also an ankle injury uh, that uh, has uh, scuppered Harry Plunkett there uh, he was unfortunately playing in a challenge match against St. Joseph's Rotter Bridge who were playing in the uh, final above in, in, in Tullamore at 4 o'clock uh, during the week and he suffered an ankle injury so those are two big losses but you'd still expect an awful lot of Colossia Column uh, from Jack Bryant Sean Courtney and Cormac Egan there would be three key men and they're all in the forwards yeah we're going to go to the coaches. We interviewed the coaches just before the game here today. Killian did a lovely interview with them, so we'll go to that now and we'll hear what the coaches have to say. I'm uh, here, gladly to be in this uh, Leinster final, and uh, after all the months of COVID, of course. Yeah, well, we're looking on it really as a bonus, to be honest. We had given up on it, like most people have given up, so to get to play this today is a real bonus. The worst thing would be like the lads meeting up maybe in 10 years' time saying, wasn't it a shame we never got to play that game that time? So either way, it'd be better to play today and lose than not to. Don't intend losing, but it'd be, it's, it's great to, play the, to get to play the game. Uh, looking at it, of course, you were South Leinster champions last year and probably fell short. So maybe uh, a little bit of a, a motivation to probably try and claim this title and ultimately. Yeah, it's definitely. After we had two great years with this bunch, an awful lot of the same bunch. So you'd hope that they'd have learnt a bit from last year. You'd hope that they'd, they'll bring a lot of what they gained the last couple of years. Same management team, a lot of same players. So you'd hope that they'll certainly will give them that added incentive today. Not that they should need it, but hopefully they will. And a good bit of health, John? Good bit of health. I mean, we have, we've had one injury at the beginning, but other than that, everybody is um, everywhere is fit and raring to go. And just looking at the weather out there, you think we were back in March maybe as a as typical school football weather? Yeah, it's more or less where we left off. You know, we would play a lot of our games in this, these kind of conditions, so for both teams, it would be pretty, pretty as much today, but I don't think it's going to have any major effect. It's, there isn't any great wind, it's going to be a bit slippy, but it'll be more or less where we left off in March. Wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Ryan Plunkett from uh, Canuckwara in uh, Granard. Uh, Ryan, into the Leinster final, we're playing schools football in July. It's uh, been an unusual year and, of course, uh, more unusual to be playing in July, of course. That's right, but look, we're one of the privileged 
four schools that are still involved in Leinster competitions today and uh, you know the lads are just really well we're all really excited about it and we just want to get out there and show what we can do uh, Looking at weather conditions and uh, everything you know not much of a win but uh, obviously a greasy ball now might leave it open for uh, a fast paced game Absolutely that's what we're hoping for we're, uh, we're very tack minded and that's what we want we want an open game these conditions are f- perfect in comparison to what we played in North Leinster final and so look we're, we're looking forward to it A little bit of history of uh, obviously within Granard you know winning a title at uh, All-Ireland level a few years back uh, you know I know there'll be no All-Ireland this year but of course you, I'm sure you would like to win another cup and uh, you know bring a bit of silverware back to the school Yeah it'll be a fantastic achievement I think numbers wise we uh, we overachieve you know we've only about 200 boys in our school and we're competing against huge schools but the talent is there and that's why that's why we're here because we have really really good players uh, feeder clubs do outstanding work and uh, you know we have, we have good players and we're, we're we're co- well. We're not confident, but we're we're hopeful that we can come here today, perform, and uh, see where we are at the end of it. Finally, your form pre-COVID was uh, you know very high scoring, some very qu- top quality games as well. Um, you know the break, you'd be hoping that uh, you can continue where you left off. That's what we're hoping for. Again, I suppose you would be hoping that maybe that the pitches have hardened up a little bit, so maybe that that might that might help us a little bit. We are, I would say, we're a smallish team and we like to we like to move it fast. So we're, look, we're we're we're, we're hopeful that uh, we can hit the ground running today. Wish you the best of luck, man. Thank you very much. So there's the story from the two managers. Uh, we're just going to pause at the moment now. We're, we're almost ready here, I think, for the national anthem. Both teams lining up here. Just to mention that the referee this afternoon's game is Keith O'Brien from the Moat Club in County Westmead. So there you have it, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. After four months of inactivity, we're back at Motherton here in Cusick Park, Mullingar. As I say, Keith O'Brien, referee from Moore County, Westmead. He must be a very popular referee because he has two All-Ireland men that have refereed All-Ireland hurling finals. One is an umpire, Barry Kelly. I've seen him going down to the apartment complex end. And I see James McGrath going to the far side of the field. Another All-Ireland uh, referee that refereed an All-Ireland hurling final. So he has to have a top, a top list of officials here, in fairness to Keith. We're almost ready to go here. The pit teams just having their last little huddle together. Maybe there's not so much social distancing in that, but at this stage, they're getting ready for battle. Both teams are over the far side of the pitch. The substitutes are over the far side of the pitch. It's still fairly damp here. We're almost ready to go here. We're almost ready for throwing. Teams are just getting into line. Both looking forward to this, I'm absolutely certain. How they'll celebrate is another question. No house parties, no anything tonight. And I'd say that'll be out the window for one of these teams if they win it. And we're almost ready to go. Colossal Column doing their final warm up. They look to be a little physically bigger than the Granard side. But size doesn't always matter. Two huge midfielders here at the centre of the field for Granard, having said that. Connor Leonard from the Mullignac the club and Caelan O'Reilly from Mullahorn. Just on that, Paul, though, that, uh, you know, their manager, Niall Plunkett, did say there, as we heard only a couple of minutes ago, that they are a smaller team, but they reckon that, you know, that they would have speed and, and, and skill inside. So it's going to be interesting to see how you, de- uh, you deal with it here. But, yeah, Colossia Column, seriously, along certain lines there, some big men. They seem to be out match killing, you know, at the centre of the field. They've brought out their number 14, the 14 there, Luke, e- Luke Egan is after coming out, out towards the centre of the field I can't actually see where he, his other midfielder has gone but he looks to be starting at the centre of the field alongside Josh Evans Nine is over here at wing back he's I see playing this. wing back actually yeah, I see uh, Jay Sheeran so has gone up into the there's wing there's quite forwards. an amount of positional changes here but we're almost ready to go the ball is in, the game is on here at Cusick Park Egan has it now his first kick of the ball down into the corner 
and it's gone out over the sideline. It's gone out over the sideline on the terrace side of the pitch. Colossal or Nukwara now with the ball. Back to the goalkeeper, Dara Madden. Madden soloing around with the ball. Stand side of the pitch here. Tiernan Madden. In towards the centre of the field. It's into centre half forward. Jordan Martin. Jordan Martin. Back to Tiernan Madden. Long ball. Deep into the forward line. But it evades everybody. And I'm afraid it's gone out over the end line and wide for the first wide of the game. Yeah, but there's the weather conditions, uh, Paul. You'd have to say, you know, that ball skidded about 13 metres out from the end line and then it just took off. The wind is uh, blowing from the Dunn stores in here to the apartments in here at, at, at TG Cusick Park and you just got away on them there. And it is fairly substantial, Killian, as well. That, that, that's a fairly strong wind and there is rain is, is blowing the whole way down the field, as Killian says, from the Dunn stores end to the apartment end. I lost it. Gosh, the Colomer just put it out over the sideline there again. That's, the That's the two sub. balls. Yeah, the sub there that came in, Cahill Ryan, he's the man to put it out over the line. You'd have to feel for the subs over on the far side, they're caught in this rain at the moment, but for social distancing, that's where they have to be. They're up on the terrace on the far side. Well, if they do come on, Killian, the only thing is they'll be, they'll be well wet by the same <laughs> as the players, so it won't make a whole lot of effect to that one. Gosh, the Colomer with the ball, playing it around the centre of the field here. That's the substitute that came in, or the replacement that came in, Carl Ryan. Carl Ryan seems to be a bit of a playmaker here for Colaster Cullum. They've lost Daniel Fox. Ball in now, right into the corner. It's the full forward again. Luke Egan, Luke Egan, but I'm afraid he drops it short. Short and into the hands of Darren Madden there in the goal. Madden now. He's after bringing it the whole way out to the forward. He passes it out to his namesake, Tiernan Madden. Tiernan Madden is fouled. Madden now, long ball again, it seems to be the Granard's modus operandi long ball into the forward line battle for possession here, who's going to get it, nice little knock back there it's heading close to the sideline it's heading close to the sideline and it's out over the sideline Mick Gordon here from the Shadona Club in Mullingar is doing the sideline here so it's going to be a sideline ball to Galash to Cullum from Ostolok Moore the yeah, ball just got away there from uh, Cormac Brady as he came across but his slippery conditions it was hard to kind of stop before the line and he just pulled it out over yeah it's a little bit it's, it's interesting uh, uh, Killian that, that Ryan, Ryan Plunkett is saying that a smaller team they probably have to play more more the ball in hand but in actual fact Nakura are actually kicking the ball in long virtually every chance they yeah. get they're, they're probably using the conditions or trying to use the conditions here they have it now we're out around the 40 now centre half forward Jordan Martin into his midfield partner. Oh, there's a lovely ball in. Close to the grass there. Might have caught a few worms picking that one up. In it goes, but that's well intercepted. Still though, Nakwira. It's off the ground. I think there could have been a pick-up shortly before that, but that's a pick-up that time of Mark O'Neill. So it's going to be, again, it's going to be a free out for... Bit, bit of a heavy solo, as, uh, as we can see by uh, Con uh, Connor Leonard there. As he was it, going it probably just ran away from him, Killian. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Foul on the back, lost to Cullum now, going on the attack. Ball into centre half forward. And the centre half forward is Carmack Egan. Carmack Egan, a lovely ball across the square. Egan gets it back, he's going to have a pop at goal. Knocks it into the forward line, who's coming in in a goal? Oh, there's a great save! There's a great save. Well, Egan Brothers linking up very, very well there. Uh, you know, telepathic and whatever. And ball then was eventually worked into uh, Sean Courtney. He got the shot, but a credit, you'd have to say, to Darren Madden. Stood up uh, and uh, knocked it out with his knee out for a 45 here. Definitely a goal chance to Killian. That, that could, oh, that yeah, could absolutely. Have been, could have been the perfect start for the Twilla Moore boys. And they, they definitely know, as we've uh, seen, they know where the, the, the back of the onion sack is as well uh, as uh, Granard. So I, I fully expect we're going to see goals in this game. And we've already seen one goal chance here. As you said, the Egan brothers combine them very, very well there. Almost telepathic there. So we're out. It's a 45. 45 to be taken. I think it's Jay Sheeran is going to take this one. The number seven for Tullamore. Ball in towards the goal mount area, but looks like the full back for Granard has it. And centre half back now, Kieran Scanlon looks to have got his hands on it. Not worried, trying to work it out. Out to come. Out towards the centre of the field. Goes back. Back lovely interplay here by Nukwira. Again, it's the long ball on the greasy sod. But that's a great interception and some fabulous work. Aaron Flanagan, but he's dropped it. He's dropped it or he's been dispossessed by Darius Sheridan. Sheridan now back out. Mark O'Neill. O'Neill back into the midfield partner. Back to O'Neill. O'Neill heading through. Could this, could he have the opening score of the game? Looked like he was fouled there. 
Looked like he was fouled there, but in actual fact, it's given as a pick up off the ground. I look, I thought it was fouled that time. I thought Mark O'Neill was fouled. I thought his arm was held, but it's going to be in because an aberration on the Tullamore side there picked off the ground. It's going to be a free in, free in on the 14 yard line, dead straight in front of the goals. This is almost a penalty without a goalkeeper. Tiernan Madden is going to take this one. Corner back coming up to take the free. And Tiernan Madden gets the opening score of the Leinster Senior B College's final. Gowneman gets the first score, 14 yard free. Yeah, Tier- Tiernan Madden, he might have two and he's back not playing there. Better way, just I better correct myself uh, there, Paul. Uh, my source was wrong. The Egan brothers, are, uh, the Egans are not brothers, but uh, well, they just have telepathy there, so it might be something in the name or whatever. Uh, but uh, just still, that, that free probably should have come a little bit sooner. It was done for the pick up off the ball, but you were correct in what you saw there. A uh, pull back of the arm, but anyway, it won't matter uh, for Granard. They've got the opening score of the game here. But as you can see, Tiernan Madden might have two in his back, but uh, playing somewhere in the half forward lane here. At the I, I think he's almost played the old Brian Dewar to Rowan style role. He's roaming all over the pitch. He seems to be, he seems to be following a couple of lads all around the pitch. But first score after six minutes anyway. Granard are ahead. Now we're from Granard ahead. First point of the game. Tiernan Madden, and again they've dispossessed in towards the centre of the field now. Long ball again. They're looking in, and it's full. Fo- it's Carter forward. Ushin Keenan. Keenan goes by. Ships it out. Lovely. Ships it out. Lovely. Two. Jack Bryan and Jack Bryan has slipped the ball over the bar the joint captain from the Shamrocks club a lovely lovely score started around the centre of the field that time Josh Evans got in possession he shipped the ball in into Ushin Keenan and Keenan shipped it on lovely to Jack Bryan possibly a goal Killian at that stage it could have got in there at that stage yeah a goal pass op- opportunity for Granard definitely uh, Dara Sheridan was the man that was maybe uh, just going to be one further uh, opportunity in, but Brady was the man that put that ball uh, over the bar it was lovely off the shoulder running you'd have to say and a good score for uh, uh, Granard but again using the conditions well here ball now Tullamore looking for the first score of the game it's two points to nil and it's going to be a free in for Kalash to Kulamas Tullamore Seven minutes gone here, two points to nil. Back up across the square it goes. Across the square it goes. It goes Luke Egan. Luke Egan, he's bottled up, he's bottled up, he's not fouled, and it's over carrying. I have to agree with the referee that time. That's good defensive work, in fairness, by Nakwero from Granard. They bottled him up, he had nowhere to go, and he had no one to pass it to. Granard seemed to have settled a better Killian so far, in my opinion. Yeah, well, they just needed to get that score. It was the first couple of attacks that they, they had broken down for them. But once they got the score, now all of a sudden it's given the, that little bit of impetus. But commentators cursed out the ball. It's got out over the line, <laughs> uh, over on the far side. But uh, still, they seem to have settled here. Y- y- you know, it, it's tricky enough, Paul. The wind is not major, but the rain is kind of it's a, it's a kind of a mist. Yeah. And it's a, yeah. I, I have to say, if you were a full back now, you wouldn't favour oh. f- facing up into that. Like. It's, it's a nightmare for a defender, in my opinion. Good pressure there, again there. Another good pressure again. Uh, one, one feature so far for Granard Killian is their tackling has been supreme in fairness to them and they're not fouling. They don't look very well. High ball in. High ball in, but in fact that's gone hopelessly wide. Yeah, not a, not a great uh, effort there and I'd imagine uh, that Ryan Plunkett won't be overly happy uh, with that and uh, I suppose seeing as we're here in TEG Cusick Park, better give a mention to Ryan of course, uh, 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 West Meadman and uh, seems to have a fairly well drilled unit here He has an, a good, he was a, he's a nippy little corner forward himself, plays for Castledown for Cool Whitehall, White Hall, just outside the town of Mullingar here, he's a really decent player, that's a lovely catch at the centre of the field that time, Luke Egan has possibly been Kalashta Columns best performer so far in this game they have looked nervous they have looked a little bit out of sorts at the moment but it's very early doors we're only nine minutes into the game it's been Granard again Granard again look where are the team that have ploughed it yeah James McGrath giving the uh, side over the far side he's safe today there's no Brian Cody here to give out to him (laughs) anyway so he's a happy man again Granard looking for the third score of the game Carr McBrady Carl McBrady looking for his second and it's gone it's gone to the right hand side and it's gone wide it was a good chance in fairness that was superb if you, if you look back at the replay there it's superb defensive work that time by Granard Mark Cunningham did wonderful work there I think he's the only Westmead man on that Granard team from Castledown Fenea Cool Whitehall That's, that would be the manager Ryan Plunkett's home club out towards the centre of the field 
Canuck were close to Cullum struggling to get their hands on the ball here. It's been virtually all Canuck were. It's been all Granard in the first half and in the first few minutes here. But again, that ball has gone high. It's gone over the top of a lot of people's heads. It's into the goalie's hands, Anthony Lamb. Anthony Lamb trying to get rid of it. I think he was fouled there and he's down. He's still down injured. Referee has called up play. I thought actually he was fouled that time, Killian. Yeah, and he looks... Maybe he's buying himself a little bit of time or something in there, but he, uh, he's definitely down, still on his, uh, bent over on the ground on his knees. And uh, some of the medical staff out to kind of deal with him there. But the uh, referee's not looking for anyone though, so just looking as he played the ball away, maybe there was a little bit of a challenge on him there. Didn't look to be a hole at any of No, 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 no. Maybe his pride is hurt a little bit or something. but Or maybe he just likes the new sod of grass that's on the <laughs> Jacuzzi Park page. Maybe he's trying to bring a bit of it home to Tullamore and, and grow a lot out there as well. Well, I have to say the pitch in, in fine condition, and I suppose that's probably, you know, as well, it's going to help the game, depending on the type of game that these teams want to play, or it's going to go against in that it's skidding off the top of the surface. But uh, TG Cusick Park hasn't seen action in a few months. It's, uh, it's looking 13, quite well. 13th of March, Killian. That was the last game that was played here in TEG Cusick Park four months ago. Ball now, Clash to Cullum, looking to get on the board, looking to get one score on the board. That's great work this time. Cormac Egan super pass, well there. super pass in. Luke Egan now. Egan, big strong man, he's going through, he strikes. Terrible poor strike, but he's soccer rooted. He's soccer rooted. Almost Marcus Rashford style finish at the end. He dropped it and it was a poor finish, first of all, but it's a goal, a goal for Luke Egan. It was a wonderful work, wonderful work that time. By Cormac Egan, shipped it into him. He went through, he mishit it first time, but he fly hacked it into the back of the net. And out of nowhere, Tullamore got into the lead. A goal to two points, 12 minutes gone here in TG Cusick Park. That's a very opportunist goal. It's probably nearly the, one of the few times that Clash Cullum have been in there. Down the other end. Now, go again. It's quickly. almost straight down the other end. It's Cormac Brady again. Great score. Good response. Good response, Brady. He seems to be the go-to man for this Canuck yeah. Wirra team. He's flying at the moment. But just got to go back, Paul, to Cormac Egan. The bit of play over on the far sideline. Two big men around him, and uh, he was, I, I was definitely felt he was going to be taken off the ball, and uh, he managed to get away. And then the little toe jab up into his hands got away, and said, "Luke Egan." Now he was lucky. You'd have to cr- uh, credit the uh, Granard defenders that got in around him, but the break just went his way. The break definitely he went his way. But in, in fairness to him, he made it all for himself. You Absolutely. know, he, he he really worked hard for it. I know he made a bit of a, bit of a hash of it the first time. But he was bang on the second time. Granard now. They're level. And they're level here in Cusick Park. Level you devils. Evens you demons. Out it goes. Granard working the ball. Working the ball out towards the centre of the field. Out it comes. Centre half forward now. Jordan Martin. Martin looking for someone to give it to. But again, that's good defending. Good that's defending by Tullamore. The goal scorer coming back to take that ball away. Yeah, and he has been their outstanding player. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. Luke Egan has been the outstanding player so far. In it goes now. Can Colossus to Cullum get something out of this one? Into Football, the forward line. John Courtney. Ball. Nice toe tap. Jack Bryant. Jack Bryant strikes it off the right foot. But Jack Bryant just drifting to the right and wide. Little unlucky Jack Bryant. He'd done all the hard work. He'd got past his man. But he just couldn't get the radar working on it. Colossia Collum, of course, have a, uh, won the South Leinster title last year. They have a number of lads involved. Jack Bryant being one, Sean Courtney, Oshin Keenan Martin, and uh, Colin Leonard. They are a uh, number of the lads that are involved out here today. That experience and uh, hoping to try and win uh, uh, the Leinster title, ultimately hoping to stand them here today. But here come Granard again. Here come Granard again. Yeah, Michael Hines, Michael Hines still on the ball. He somehow managed to hold on to it, and he's nipped in again. He's oh, surely a foul. Keith is going to give a penalty. It did look like a foul to me. I thought it was a foul the first time, certainly the second time. He should have been dispossessed. He had almost lost it twice, but I, I, I don't doubt for one second that the referee is right in that. I think he might have been fouled earlier, though. I think I thought the, the, same the, Killian, one yeah. he, the one he might have called, though, I'm not sure about because he seems to put we'll his have head a look down at it now. and lean into the player. But opportunity, how he did that in along the end line, and then he just kind of borrowed his no, way. No, he did. There's no doubt about it. There was two arms around him. I think that's a penalty. I think that's a decent decision. And it's a yellow card as well. 
It's a yellow card as well. Yellow card for the number two there, uh, Michael Feeney. Michael Feeney. So, corner back now will have to live on his nerve up against uh, Michal Hines for the rest of this game. He has, or, or the other corner with Cormac Brady who's having a great game for Granite. Oh, he oh, missed he's it. put it wide. Oh, Michael Hines. Oh, my God. He's after creating such a chance for himself. Did everything right, and he really, that was a poor, poor penalty, uh, K- Killian. Yeah, I, I, just looking at the way he came up to it, he nearly he looked like he hit it with his heel. Um, whatever way he kind of tried to just get it with the inside of his foot but he just we'll, I think just we'll just have a look at the replay here and we'll actually see exactly what happened here I think he actually dug into the ground before he struck the actual ball and that's exactly what he did Yeah, he struck the ground before he hit the ball he we're stu- having a little break now here it's a water break here at the time but just that's a huge chance for Granard gone yeah. amiss yeah it, just look at it again uh, his toes seem to be up as he connects with the ball and it kind of catches then He's kind of his heel, as you look at it. As you said, yeah, he digs into yeah. the ground and his foot is kind of up. So it, it just took the trajectory of the ball away to the left. In, 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 in honesty, it never even... It no, never, no. It never troubled. Never threatened the no. goalkeeper at all. So a big turnaround here in the last few minutes. Tullamore, after getting a goal, a wonderfully worked goal. Luke Egan finishing it off. And then at the opposite end, Granard. You'd have to credit, uh, you know, Tullamore in in in, tr- in getting into this game, and that goal could be vital because I have to say, the opening quarter, I don't think they deserve to be level. Um, Granard have done all the attacking, playing the conditions quite well, and uh, you know, worked themselves in there, won a penalty. Could that penalty come back to haunt them? You know, they, if they were one three to three up now, I think they would be fully deserving of uh, absolutely, of that. absolutely. Here's the replay of the goal uh, now. Watch this. Watch this little bit of a pickup. Look at that. Oh, that's Jablis. super. Super stuff. And, they, and he had the head up straight away, looking for the man coming through. Luke Egan then took it up. He was on the, just inside the 40. There's the miss hit. It was kind of half blocked, but he just had the presence of mind to be able to flick it into the back of the net. And it has kept Klaus to call him in the game. In a game, really, Killian, that they've been completely outplayed in, if, if the truth be known. Well, it's just around the middle. They haven't been able to get an awful lot of ball forward. And uh, it's credit to Granard. To Granard, you'd have to say, if their, their middle... Uh, Diamond they're working quite well and as a forward unit are actually defending quite well they're actually putting the the Kalosha column backs under serious pressure uh, coming out with the uh, with the ball but again you'd, um, Brian Masterson he couldn't have done a whole lot more he got the block he thought but it just the way it came back and spun back and here goes the, the penalty again you want to have a, a, a look at it I'm sure Michal Hines won't appreciate this being played and played and played but uh, well he yeah. certainly won't want to see the replay of it again no, anyway. there's no doubt about it but uh, level here again Yes, ladies and gentlemen, 18 minutes gone. 18 minutes gone here in TG Cusick Park, and we're level. A goal to Tullamore, three points to Granard, three scores to one. Granard have probably been the better team in the first half, but Tullamore have stuck at their task, and they're in the back in the game. They've stopped kicking it out long now, they've kicked it out short, so out it goes, far side, on the terrace side of the pitch. Moving the ball nicely, and that's the substitute there, Carl Ryan. Ryan now, nice ball over the top. Granner trying to get a hand at the ball, they can't get there. And again, it's that man Egan again, Harmac Egan again. He seems to be the Johnny on the spot here the whole time for Tullamore. Moving it now up along the stand side of the pitch. Lovely ball in, but it's a bit short, and it's well defended. Well defended that time, Carl Gilligan. Gilligan now, Canuckwira moving it out, out towards the centre of the field. Jordan Martin. Martin ships it on he kicks it back again Jordan Martin skips by his man looking for an outlet gives it into the centre of the field Quaylen O'Reilly Quaylen O'Reilly looking for someone can't see it at the moment he goes backwards and he overcarried that's a correct decision in fairness the referee hasn't got too many of them wrong so far Killian no no okay. credit Keith he's uh, refereed this quite well as I said in difficult conditions and um, you know it was a right spot there on the, the big man Quaylen O'Reilly He's 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 refereed the game with a little bit of common sense, which which we don't often, which we don't often see, or which we don't see enough probably from referees. It's a little bit of common sense with the conditions that are in it. Well, I suppose Keith, in fairness to him, allowing the young lads to enjoy the game and the conditions, maybe factoring that in as well. Uh, here, you'd have to credit him on that one. And don't forget, this is probably the first competitive game anywhere in the country. I'm just going to say that if if, if not the first competitive game anywhere yeah. in the country. It's going to be a busy weekend everywhere, but uh, definitely this is the first one. Goalkeeper dragged around. Dragged around that time by Jack Bryan. And ja- I think Jack Bryan could be in a bit of trouble here. 
just get and take that. I think he's a little bit fortunate there. Ball, long ball in. Again, it's going to hop. It's going to hop and it's going to hop into the granard man's hands. It's going to hop into Daryl Sheridan's hands. Sheridan now gets it into the corner, but that's a poor, that's a poor effort. Get that ball forward there. But again, you'd have to credit Daryl Sheridan. 14 on his back, but uh, has come out an awful long way. 45 metre line a couple of times to get involved in the play. There are fairly mobile six in there. Uh, always switching around and moving. And Sheridan will able to win his own ball. I, I, I think Sheridan is there to drag out that Aaron Flanagan. I think he's there to drag out Aaron Flanagan from the full back position. It looks like to me whether, whether Granard are, are, are afraid of him. But that's, a, that's again, that's a super feel, Luke Geegan. He has been definitely the best player on the Colossa column side, if not probably the one of the best players on the park. Ball across, lovely ball. Ball across, that's a beautiful ball again. John Furlong now from the Tullamore Club, in towards corner forward. Bryant in corner forward, it's shipped on again. Oh, there's a poor effort, Emmett Curley. Man outside, there was a possible chance to break through that time, but that's poor, but it's going back, Keith. But Keith O'Brien is bringing yeah. it back and I think he's actually again I think he's right there I think that time I think Jack Bryan was fouled in the, in the act of passing the ball he gave it the advantage there was no advantage for Tullamore Emmett Curley dragging this ball wide so it's Jack Bryant now joint captain he's going to take it he's he's just outside the 21 yard line maybe 25 26 metres out lovely kick of the ball and if he could have got it any straighter over the post, that is as straight the ball as it went over the post I've ever seen here in Cusick Park. Lovely, lovely, confident kick. 1-1 to Tullamore. Three points to Granard. 21, nearly 22 minutes gone here in teenage, teenage, TG Cusick Park. Isn't it amazing how a game changes now all of a sudden? It's completely turned. Completely turned in Colossus to Collins' favour. Now I know it's only one score but again you're talking about Keith uh, O'Brien's referee spotted that foul very well on Jack Bryant and uh, then the shot wasn't great maybe from Emmett Curley but called it back for the original foul again good spot by Keith which is, which is the right thing to do if, if there's no advantage to the player he has to get some advantage somewhere ball in into Egan again Egan trying to get down on the ball and the referee was said he was fouled again it's going to be a free in it's Jack Bryant, actually. Jack Bryant was fouled. And I presume as he's the free taker, he's probably going to take this one. Again, just outside the 14 y- or the 21-yard line. 20-meter line for those of you that are still using metric systems. I don't know what the problem is, who's going to take it, but... Just somebody better take it quicker he might give it again Bryant now looking for his second score of the game strikes it kicks it well I don't think there was ever any doubt that that was going to be over the bar no Jack Bryant uh, he's a good pedigree behind him again uh, Amanda's been involved in the awfully under 20 panel so um, knows, knows where the posts are and will be one of the key men here today but the water break seems to have worked in Colossia Column's favour and I think maybe the message from James Buckley and Niall Stack uh, there is maybe you know Colossia Column turning the screw here a little bit yeah Granard seems to have gone into their shell a small bit that, that energy that they had early on in this game and their tackling is just not as fervent as it was in the opening exchange in this game and they've dragged a lot of men behind the ball here as well but Colossia Column working it around the edges trying to look for the breakthrough again that's a horrible ball but two men colliding no communication there whatsoever that could have been easily cleared it was a very very poor ball in by the replacement Carl Ryan it just dropped short it came in between two defenders there that time yeah Cahill Gilligan won't be uh, thanking Caelan O'Reilly for that one uh, I think Cahill had his eyes on it at Caelan then just decided to get involved in the play and uh, he kind of side swiped him a little bit his own man uh, as we can see here on the screen the ball coming in it was an easy enough one to deal with and uh, Caelan just taking him out but um, yeah a little bit unfortunate Cahill he should be uh, okay uh, as well just maybe Paul when we have a break we just mentioned maybe the, the Colossia Column management team um, it's an interesting one in that uh, James Buckley and 
and Niall Stack are the two main men uh, over the side. They're former students. They're not teachers in the school. Uh, but Niall would be known now to some people uh, for his, uh, his psychology and strength and conditioning, know-how and everything like that was involved in with Tipperary uh, whatever a couple of years ago. Uh, he's now the taller, more uh, senior club manager uh, and he's involved here. But they decided, to, the two of them, to get involved with the, club, uh, the, the school team and uh, try and maybe push football along and... Uh, well, they're in a, in, a, in a Leinster final here, so it's obviously been uh, working it's, quite it's well. It's obviously worked for them as well, you know, and it takes a huge commitment from somebody that's not a teacher at the school to be involved in, in, in that capacity, I suppose. With yellow cards there that time, yellow card for Mark O'Neill from Granard and for uh, Cahal Ryan from... Uh, yeah, I think Barry Kelly called uh, Keith's attention to... Or not, uh, James, James McGrath, McGrath, I should yeah. say, over on the yeah. far side called... Uh, Keith's attention there to something that was going on off the ball I, I, I just think it was a small bit of nonsense like young lads will, will ah yeah <laughs> uh, tried to get the upper hand sure it was a bit like shopping in Lidl and out of pulling and dragging and you still got nothing over it at the end you know <laughs> uh, anyway just let you know Cahill is okay and he's up and going again thanks for the God we don't want to see any injuries here today because with the skiddy surface it has it is a recipe for unfortunate incidents to take uh, take place but this game has in fairness this game has been played in a very very sporting manner there has i don't think there has been a dirty belt in it so far at all and there's that man that started so well for canuck that's the first time i've seen him on the ball in a long time tiernan madden he seems to have gone out of the game in through the center of the field now in through the center of the field comes connor leonard connor leonard low ball in looking for looking for his corner forward gets his corner forward out it comes Aaron Smith, Aaron Smith, a bit of an air shot there, fisted on, fisted on, two guys again getting in each other's way, but that should have been over the bar, there's no doubt about it, Jordan, Aaron Smith probably should have scored it himself. Yeah, just probably went out a little bit outside his range a little bit and then had to try and put it up over a, high, a, a, a taller man and uh, the ball dropped short, but uh, the flick had came off the, the hands there. It was still a dangerous enough ball because Caelan O'Reilly was in underneath it and uh, it was flicked away. Uh, it's there. gone out for 45, 45 so yeah. some of the Tullamore lads must have got a hand to it. I think Aaron Flanagan might have got a fist to it by the look of that replay there. So here we are, 45 now to Nockwara. They're behind by two. Had a great kick, a bit forced there by Kieran Scanlon. It, uh, he looked to be going bit. for power more yeah. than, than direction. In fairness, and, and Kieran Scanlon has started well. He's he's on a tough man. In fairness to him, he has one of the stars of the Tullamore team, Cormac Egan, to take care of as well. But uh, as you said, it, it wasn't his best. Twenty-seven and a half minutes gone here in KG Cusy Park. It's Tullamore one-two. Kalash to Cullum, Tullamore 1 2. Ganuck, we're Granard, 3 points. It's still anyone's game. There's a, there's a poor pass. <coughs> Ganuck, we're now on the attack. In it goes. Jordan Martin. Martin gets it back. He's fouled. He's fouled again. And this time again, it's Cahal Ryan. Cahal Ryan is very playing very close to the edge here. He's already booked. Yeah, got to have to keep his uh, eyes on that but just uh, as we can see when that ball broke down Cormac Brady was on the ground being attended to uh, by the uh, physio I think it's Geraldine Farley Brady and uh, when the ball broke down then up like a light he was it was amazing whatever holy water was out there it's it the worked. magic water from Mullingar boys and girls ladies and gents the magic water he was up like a light there in case anything was going to happen typical corner forward trying to sniff an opportunity and there's a score for Granard so he made up for the 45 miss in fairness there. Kieran Scanlon, he yeah. didn't go for power that time. He went to place the ball over the bar. Lovely strike. Four points to Canuck, and Granard. 1-2 to Tullamore, Kalash to Cullum. 29 minutes. We'll be heading to the break very, very shortly. Again, Tullamore have abandoned the long kick out. They're playing on all their kick out short. But that has played into the hands of Canuck, Wirad. Referee is given a foul. I think he's probably right. You you just look at the setup there, Paul. Though, like there's 13 men for Granard actually in the opponent's part of the field, which is an unusual situation. They they tend to push up on uh, on on kickouts, narrowing all that space that uh, that uh, Kalosha Column might get. And uh, it just goes to show you that you know defensively uh, quite strong minded, even though they're an attacking team. And they've hunted in packs, yeah. uh, Killian as well. They're really really going after the man in possession. It's all about the man in possession. They're trying to take it off him and they'll work it after that. And again, 
dispossessed turnover there Joe Schmidt if he was watching this the former Ireland rugby manager would be absolutely thrilled with the amount of turnover that that Nakwira have done come out. in it goes full forward now Dara Sheridan Sheridan looking for space gets space but no one to give it off to yes he does it's outside to his wing back Mark Cunningham the only Westmead man in the park here today apart from himself and a few of the staff it's in it goes Michael Hines Michael Hines kicks it off the left foot and Michael Hines pops her over the bar good score doesn't make up for his penalty miss but it surely gives him a little boost of confidence it was a nice score again came from a dispossession of Kalosh to Colum and, and good support play there by uh, Mark Cunningham kind of was holding and holding and then the pass came across it wasn't a great pass from Dara Sheridan but got involved in the play and then played a lovely little ball inside but Cunningham waited until he got the right pass until he got the right man in fairness to him out it comes now towards the stand side of the pitch again it's that man Luke Egan I'd, I'd say he must have covered every blade of grass in, in the Cusick Park here today playing it around the centre he lost the column looking for it Egan again he seems to be the man that's looking for the ball the whole time in it goes now Former Keegan the same kick off the left foot kick off the left foot that's a goal it's in, the, it's net. in the net oh it's in the net it's in the net I think that was Carl Ryan that ball just dropped in there Carl Ryan I think it's the, I think it's the lad that replacement from before the start of the game I think Carl Ryan actually got that it was poor defending in fairness on the Granard part but the ball just seemed to sail and stay in the, li- stay in the air forever yeah but I think Dara Madden might have been kind of uh, his eye taken off it by the presence of Sean Courtney that came in there that ball dropped I think if you asked him to do that again he wouldn't be able to you know there's not it's just it's so tight to the angle and I think Dara Madden needed to be a little bit uh, I suppose a bit stronger with two hands to come out on that and claim it and he went up with one hand and it just flopped off it and into the net and again slightly against the run of play at, the, at this stage a second goal I, I think it's I'm nearly sure it's number 20 I'm nearly sure it's Carl Ryan a swing of the left boot on it so 32 minutes gone we're into out of time here 2-2 two, two to Tullamore and 5 points to Granard Granard now looking to get something before the break it's gone a little too far it's gone a little too far and it's skidded off the surface and Kalash the column now tails are up a small bit Killian tails are up they look to be going for a killer punch maybe before the half time whistle but again you would have been saying there that maybe they'd be quite happy to win at half time level after Granard had got back with two scores and now all of a sudden they're back in front by three points have not I suppose played as well as Granard I think Granard have been the better team overall they've worked obviously harder but they've had to work so hard maybe to get the scores that they did and it's just come a little bit easier for Kalash to Cullum they seem to have the better strike force in my opinion Killian. they seem to have lads that are willing to take on those chances Granard have wasted an awful lot of their chances it must be said and haven't taken as much chances as Tullamore have I know a bit of a fortunate goal a more than a fortunate goal from Tullamore is the difference between the sides at the moment yeah, more than a fortunate goal at 2-2 two, two to 5 points. Again, the skiddy surface wasn't helping Cahill and O'Reilly that time and it was that man, Luke Egan, again got his hands on the ball. He has been the star player in the first half. He lost the column now, looking for one score possibly before before the half-time whistle. Playing it around nicely. Using the space in front of him. It's in again to Bryant. Bryant now drops it. Can he get it back? No, he can't. The reason he can't get it back is because he was being pushed in the back. Jack Bryant. And I, I assume he's going to take it himself. He's kicked over two lovely ones so far. I presume Jack Bryant. This could possibly be the final action of the half. But Jack Bryant, everywhere Jack Bryant seems to go down in that kind of neck of the woods, uh, two men are on him. So, you know, an opportunity, Colossia Column, maybe to u- utilise somebody else. But uh, Bryant, you know, very talented flair- player, has uh, worked another free here and uh, an opportunity to kick this one. Great score. Hi, handsome. Again, it's directly over the black spot. That is just superb free taken. And there goes the whistle for half time. Ladies and gentlemen, 34 minutes played in the first half. Kalash to Cullum, Tullamore 2 3. Kanukwara, Os Granard, Koei Pointa. Five points. It's, it's nine points to five. Four points in it at half time. Very, very interesting game. 
slightly, I would have to say, a flattering scoreline towards Tullamore, but it's quite a good game nonetheless. Yeah, there's no, no doubt about it. A very entertaining game. I think Granard, though, will feel very hard done by that they're four points down here at half time. Um, you know, the goals that came for Kalash to Cullum have been a little bit fortuitous, but still you have to take the opportunities, and they probably have had the killer instinct. Uh, when you look at there was an opportunity below, Granard should have a penalty, they should have scored it, and uh, they probably had another goal opportunity uh, that didn't work out for them. But, uh, you know, here at uh, half time, you know, they go over now, unfortunate in the weather conditions, everything like that. They can't win, they can't get dry, they have to stand on the sideline, which is the whole unfortunate thing about these uh, uh, COVID restrictions and everything like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, Tullamore haven't been fantastic, but uh, find themselves four points in front. We're just going to have the highlights of the first half now, Killian, uh, while we're waiting here. Yeah, so some very good. You this, know, this is the first, this is goal. The first goal. Like uh, a bit of skill here from Egan. I watch, agree with you. Watch this toe jab. That's and head fantastic. up straight away. Yeah. Head up straight away, looking for the outlet. And who did he find as the outlet? Only Luke Egan. Tullamore's best player in the first half, in my opinion. Possibly the best player on the pitch. Here he goes. He fly hacks it actually, and it's blocked. But he still has the presence of mind to be there to whip it into the back of the net. Yeah, you feel for Sean Masterson or uh, Brian Masterson there. He came across, got the block, and the block just popped back uh, uh, to uh, the, into the boot of uh, Luke Egan, and he was able to, to do it. But there is a lovely little bit of skill uh, again by uh, Cormac Egan. Uh, interesting enough, this is 35 metres out, uh, Paul. There was nothing else that Luke Egan was going to do. You know, was and here we have the in. penalty chance for Nakwera. The penalty chance for Nakura, I don't think there's any doubt about that, Killian. I think it was a penalty. As you said, it possibly could have been a penalty for the challenge maybe before that. But this has been a major, major point in the first half. Major turning point, actually, because Tullamore had just scored a goal before this. And Michael Hines stepped up to this one. And he looked a dug right into the ground and never even threatened the goalkeeper no and uh, he, he probably what he was probably trying to do was uh, psych out the goalkeeper I suppose as any as any uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know any corner forward would do or penalty taker is going to do but I just feel that he his connection with the ball wasn't fantastic and here's the second goal for Kalosh Kalosh yeah. Kalosh we're, we're nearly sure we can't actually see the number on his back but we think it's Carl Ra- Ryan got that high ball in and I think goalkeeper Darren Madden needed to be stronger there if you have a guy coming in Sean Courtney coming in like that he got completely I, I'd say distracted by Court, him Courtney kind of blindsided yeah. would that be fair to yeah, say yeah I'd be fair to say and I think he just puts up one hand on it then he should have taken man ball everything just to get that ball out of there Not and it a, ended a, up in the net you know nothing illegal in fairness to Courtney he was he was just following in on the ball but it seemed to blindside the goalie that time he was a little unfortunate it's not a nice thing to happen particularly in the final but such as the way it is so we're half time here ladies and gents 2-3 to Tullamore 5 points to Granard second half coming up with us very very shortly thank you very much
Yes, we're just ready to throw in here for the second half here, live in Cusick Park. Mullingar and Granard now, looking to get back into this game straight away from the kickoff. In it goes, into corner forward, Michael Hines. Hines has been excellent so far, in fairness to him. Still with the ball. Has he anyone to ship it? He's no one to ship it, but he passes it. He somehow gets it out of there. That's great defended by Tullamore, it must be said. They're crowding around the ball. They're doing a Granard on it. What Granard were at in the first half. Out it comes towards the centre of the field. Big man there. Not fouled by the referee. He says no foul. And I think he's possibly right. He was probably trying to buy a free that time. Out it comes. It comes to the corner back. Corner back. Tiernan Madden. High ball in towards the square. There's a huge man on the edge of the square there. It's, it's still breaking around. It could go anywhere. Can't get a foot to it. And it's cleared somehow. Somehow it's cleared out over. That's great defended by Tullamore, Killian. Yeah, you'd have to say credit uh, Mark Cunningham getting in there. But just as he was about to drop it to his foot, it was rubbed out of his grasp and kicked away by Kalosha Cullum. Ball back in and in towards the square. It's into full forward. That's a great catch. He shifts it out. Out to the wing half forward that time. Aaron Smith. Smith shifts it out. Out to Cunningham. Cunningham can't get a boot on it. Man doing a serious amount of work back oh, there is Emmett some, Curley. Yeah, there's tremendous defending here from both sides. Both sides hungry for the ball. It's like it's, it's, it's like a bar of soap there at the moment, but all of a sudden, Tullamore back on the attack, and it's that man again. Cormac Egan flying down here on the stand side. Nobody can catch him. He's in through. He ships it out past here. Lovely ball, and he goes for goal, but that's a block. That's a block. It looked like a foot block to me, Killian. I, I'd have to watch it again but I thought in fairness to Brian Masters and got across again he was unlucky in the first goal in that it broke back and he was definitely making sure there wasn't going to be a second goal going to come <laughs> off it but uh, he did very well but can you say something about Cormac Egan he covered the ground there uh, unbelievable he must pace. have went 40 yards he but must he, have went 40 yards and nobody could catch him but just phenomenal pace Paul you'd have to say for and never lost and never lost the ball in fairness Killian I mean he had it, he was toe to hand he kept he kept in possession of the ball and the head was up the whole time looking to see was there a player in a better position and he did find him I'd love to see his speed over 100 yards you know he's just phenomenal there with the ball in hand that's a poor enough effort though from Jack Bryan from the 45 yeah Bryan the second wide there he has been deadly though in fairness from oh no, no from question. dead ball situation out of hand he hasn't been as, as, as accurate possibly off the ground but out of hand he has been excellent Canuckwira have put their midfielder Caelan O'Reilly looks like he's gone in full forward they're probably going to bomb him now from the, for the rest of this game in towards in towards the half forward line lovely pass it's down along the side in it goes Aaron Smith Smith now chips it on straight away Carmack Brady Brady save. across the square it's a save actually a great save out it comes again it's out to Tiernan Madden Tiernan Madden back across the square is there anywhere for, there's not room to swing a cat here but it's somehow somehow it's up and it's over the bar Carmack Brady Carmack Brady his third point of the game Again, Aaron Smith came in there and you'd have to say great credit to him in getting the ball across the keeper to the top corner it was going. But uh, Anthony Lamb, what a save in fairness to him. And, and you know, Kalosha Cullum got around in and were able to scupper any opportunity of a follow-up there. But uh, a great save there from uh, Anthony Lamb. He just got the hand to it, didn't he? Yeah. And cross his body as well, you know. So Yeah, he, know. Was actually, he was actually possibly going the other way. In towards the centre of the field. Breaks. But I'm afraid it, it's... Keith O'Brien has given a free. In it goes. Granard again now. Referee spotted something inside going on. And, uh, He's given a free out, I think, is he? There's something Keith has spotted there. I think it's going back to the original kick out. He wasn't happy with it. He's possibly going to probably going to take the kick out again. Or is it a free? He had spot? No, there was something going on inside, obviously. It's yeah. a free It's a free from where the kick out was taken by the looks of it. He's given the free anyway. That's That's... Makes no mind what he gave it for. Again, Granard, almost as the start of the first half, Killian. They look hungry. They look to want to go for the ball. In towards the centre of the ball. That looked like a hand over the shoulder. Not given. Not yeah. given. Jordan Martin, I think he was fouled that time. But again, a swarm of players around the Clash to Cullum, man. A yeah. swarm of players around the Clash to Cullum, man. This is like Tyrone at their, at their absolute best. 
It's not a blanket. It's almost a duvet they had around them at that stage. <laughs> yeah. But there was the original foul there. It was missed, and uh, then eventually it was worked very hard on the player. Then when he's caught like that, four players around him is a yellow card there being given uh, to the number 15 uh, for Kalosh to call him. So Oshin Keenan Martin, uh, the joint captain, he's been given a yellow card there for something that was obviously said but um, Cahal Ryan was caught in possession there four Granard men just came in around him they were like uh, bees on, in a hive or something. bees in a honeypot and uh, they were just all over him and, and another uh, score second score to half Michael Hines so and there's only two in it now two three to two to Lamore. seven points to Granard again Granard have started the two halves far far the better side They've really dominated the opening exchange, the opening five minutes here in the second half. They needed to, of course, uh, Killian, because they were at four points behind. Oh, yeah, four points down and uh, playing into the wind and the rain here. Uh, I would imagine, though, as well, Ryan Plunkett had a bit of a flea in the rear at half time. No uh, doubt about it, because they had been the dominant team for me of that first half and went in four points down. And the fact that Caelan O'Reilly as well is in there at full ba- fullback now. Yeah, no doubt Or at full it. forward, I beg your pardon. High ball in again. It's into that full forward. It's into O'Reilly. It looks like they're, they're going to be their modus operandi for this second half. They look like they're going to bomb the ball in towards him. Hope that he, he, if he doesn't get it, that he knocks it down to somebody that's there. Well, again, swarming around it. Well, in these conditions, that might be it might help. But they're not going to be able to kick long balls in from far out, though. You'd have to question Paul as well. It, they're going to have to work it to at least 35 metres out. Because with the breeze that is there, they're not going to be able to hoof a long one from the middle, at least. No, they're going to have to work it in, in, in past the 40, Killian. You're absolutely right. So there's a stop in play there now with, uh, it looks like, Michael Feeney, I think. Is the man injured in the far side? He picked up a yellow card in that first half, so but he's after picking up a bit of a knock. Aaron Flanagan, you know, would be no mean feat either uh, of a of a full back uh, back there. The Nafina man, uh, though, would be. I'm sure he has seen big men in his time and uh, well able to deal with uh, the big man that's gone in there, marking him at the moment in Cale O'Reilly. O'Reilly would be a stand-up man for Granard. Got a goal in the North Leinster final, so you know he's capable of being able to get a flick on something. He's a big, strong man, isn't, isn't he? Yeah, he's a big oh, unit. Oh, he's a big <laughs> unit. I'd have to jump up to hit him ahead in the, in the ribs, I think. <laughs> <laughs> going to be a free out here for Kalosh Column. And maybe now, in a way, for Kalosh to Column, the, the, the water break is going to be coming up now as well. Uh, this might help them. You know, it might just kill Granard's little bit of momentum at the start of the second half here. Yeah. It, 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 uh, <laughs> if, if it's tactics, it's ac- absolutely brilliant tactics and fairness. Michael Feeney has been uh, dealt with and uh, we can get the player back up and going again here. Rain has got a little bit heavy there in the last few minutes as well. It's, it, the ball has to be like a bar of soap at the moment. But in fairness to the lads and to both teams, this game has been played at, at, a, at enormous pace and with enormous guts in, in pretty atrocious conditions, it must be said, for the month of July. Yeah, it's a, it, it's a day that has changed completely. The morning wasn't too bad, but uh, definitely changed. And as I was talking to some of the managers beforehand, typical conditions, maybe schools football will be played in, in around February and March. And there's a very, very silly free from Dara Sheridan. He was coming out with the ball, and he's given it away rather, rather cheaply, I must admit. He, he, he had total possession of the ball, absolutely doing that, and now he's going to get a yellow card for it make no sense to me there whatsoever he could have kept going with that ball instead he turned back used the shoulder he's after getting a yellow card over yeah Darryl Sheridan picking up that again a man here you see it on the screen here on the replay he shouldered right into him yeah ball has gone dribbling down into the corner at Cusick Park here that's a dead the dead corner we call it and that's a foul oh that's going to be a yellow foul. card is it is that Jack Bryant and Bryant is on a yellow card I think is he uh, no no sorry he's not he went in a bit hard there on the player that was going down on the ball and I think he's going to pick up a yellow card for himself, no doubt about it. But again, Paul, you'd have to say, credit to these guys coming out. I know they were anxious to play this game, but what okay. a year 2020 has been for these young lads. Most of them play, uh, doing the leave and search that didn't happen and, uh, you know, thought maybe they weren't going to be able to play their Leinster final. Thankfully, they're getting to play it and they get to play it in July. <laughs> and, and in fairness to them, they're making good use of it. I mean, you could not fault the commitment and the heart of all 30 players. In, in, in fairness to them, after being out for so long, it, it must be a, a huge fillet for them into the ball can he make it can Sheridan make up for it no that's a great interception 
super interception that time. Oh, and he, they've lost it again. It looked like it was a super interception that time by Ocean Keenan, but somehow Colossal Column have managed to get their hands on the ball again. Ocean Keenan seems to be playing that quarterback, kind of sitting back in the pocket there. He's yeah, picked up a, a little bit of an octo. As I've said, the kind of Brian Dewar role again. Ball down now, into the corner. Looking for Bryant. It's, it seems to be the modus operandi. Bryant looked like he had the hands close to the grass there. Out it comes Luke Egan now. Egan, toe tapping it. Into the corner. Looking for another goal, are they? Out it comes again. It's going to be a goal, is it? Yes, it is! It's a third goal. Third goal. Yeah, third goal. And it looks like it's a man that's uh, not long in there. Uh, Michael Fox. I think it's the man that put that ball to the back of the net. A very talented uh, Young man involved in the underage setup in uh, Offaly. He's a, he's a twin. Uh, just can't break into the, to the first 15, I've been told. But he's come on and he's done the damage. And there now, for all the work Granner did in the opening few minutes, Paul, Tullamore Rail answer with a goal at the other end. We didn't see that substitute coming in. We're not quite sure who, it, who we came on for. Uh, I, I can't actually see the numbers there. I have a feeling... Actually, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure he came on for, but it was a super, super finish. It was great work along the sideline as well, or towards the end line. But when, when he got it there, Fox got it, he absolutely whacked it into the back of the net. No chance that time. In fairness, Darren Madden cannot be faulted for that one. That was just a super finish. Third goal for Tullamore. Yeah, I think one of the midfielders, if I'm looking out there, might have been replaced. So just looking around at numbers. But a great goal and uh, again, lovely little move down along here and uh, tight again in towards the end line, ball back in. And what Granard can't do is they haven't been able to create the goal scoring opportunity apart from the penalty, whereas Colossia Column have effectively taken every goal opportunity they've created. They have, and I think you're right about that substitute. I think it might be John Furlong, the number nine for Colossia Column has gone off the field. But in fairness, Michael Fox has definitely made a nuisance of himself since he came on. And he's got a goal. Yeah, took it well also. Ah, it was a super finish. In through the centre now. Granard man has it, but he's fouled. I don't see the number nine out there, Killian. I, I, I have a feeling that that's who was replaced. It's one of the midfielders, as you said. It's either Josh Evans or John Furlong. Okay, so number four, I think we're getting word now, is there was the man that was replaced so in actual fact it's Dermot Walsh the corner back number four that was replaced by Michael Fox Tullamore now back on the attack they just moved the ball that little bit quicker than Granard and create the greater chance there's there's the first first advance mark first advance mark we've seen in the game and Keith has actually given them the free I, I thought once he had played on with the ball I thought that was how it had to be done but he's bringing it back for the mark you see I think once the whistle goes is, is, that, the stop, is that the stop then? alright I think so I want to clarify the rule on that but uh, it's, a better, it's a better kicking position anyway it's, it's the first one we've been treated so we'll, we'll take it at that Sean, Sean Courtney from the St. Vincent's Club is going to take this one Sean Courtney strikes it drops it but drops it short can't understand why Brian didn't take that one. Maybe it wasn't on the right foot, but surely Brian was the man. Out it comes now. Granard back on the attack. Tiernan Madden. They need something. They need a goal. They need something to get them back up and firing. Madden has been has been has been out of the game for a little bit of it, a little bit of it, but he's had to come back at the start of this second half. Keith is surely given a foul for that one. In it goes in towards the full forward, and the full forward is Dara Sheridan. Sheridan still fighting for the ball, but Kalash to Cullum get around him in droves. And it's a free out, a free out. Great defended by Kalosh to Cullum that time. Superb defended. Kalosh to Cullum seemed to have weathered the storm, Paul. You know, anything that it would have come beforehand with the two points, and you'd have to credit Granard, and they were all over Kalosh to Cullum. Kalosh to Cullum get a break down the field, put the ball in the back of the net, and it's changed the game again here. Just just from the injury, when, when the, when the yes. Tullamore player went out for the injury, it has seemed to... It has seemed to solidify whatever the instructions that were gone on to the field at that stage. They certainly need to be working, and definitely... Michael Fox has made a huge difference to the uh, Tullamore side. He's been he's been a good substitution. It has to be said. Out it comes again. Granard now. Look, they have to get something out of this. They really need to get a score and get a score quickly over the top. But I'm afraid it's gone. Well anticipated at that time. Ushin Keenan. Ushin uh, Keenan. He's Martin, actually playing. Yeah. He's almost playing as an extra midfielder at the moment. Ushin Keenan is certainly not playing in the forward line. 
but then when you have forwards the likes of, of, of the Colossal Cullum has you might be able to do that Kieran Scanlon now drives it up but I'm afraid he's driven it out over the end line on the, stand, on the terrace side of the pitch over where the substitutes are Grant are going to make a sub over on the far side with the looks of things but just again I feel Paul as you rightly pointed out with the, the stoppage of that injury Granard seemed to have run out of ideas now all of a sudden you know it just it's, it, it, it seems to be taking that little extra seconds to move the ball in comparison to the opening five or six minutes as we pause for the water break again yeah and I, I think you're right uh, Killian I think there's going to be a substitution on the Granard side they need something they need a spark and in my opinion they need a goal yeah, need a goal now. I think at this stage, there's no doubt about it. You're 15 minutes left. If you want to win, uh, you know, uh, at the Leinster title here, you're going to have to do something uh, major uh, in that regard. But they just can't seem to push on beyond the uh, the Kalosha column half back line at the moment. And uh, you know, the, the little bit of impetus now. You'd imagine Ryan Plunkett is going to have to have uh, words with them here. They have a quarter of an hour. It's probably their last game for the school. Going to have to make serious efforts here if uh, they want to be bringing the title back. Yeah, and. and like it, it, 16 halfway through the, se- the f- second half here it's not beyond the realms of possibility that they could do it but that's, that, that in fairness the fact that Granard are, are not getting through is due to an absolutely tight defence for Clash to call him Aaron Flanagan is having a tremendous game Colin Leonard you know these guys are really putting the shoulder to the fe- wheel Michael, Michael Feeney they've, they've been excellent in trying to defend that yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, they have been, um, you know, in, in, in push, pushing up. Uh, like, you'd have to credit Kalosh to call him on occasion. Uh, you know, their defence starts with their full forward line, and uh, that has created, uh, you know, problems for Kanukwara. Uh, uh, but you'd have to say then at the other end, when they came out at the start of the second half, uh, Paul, the Granard, just the push that they had as well from the middle, once they kept Kalosh to call him down at the Dunn Stores end of the ground here, uh, they were getting something out of it. But once Kalosha Column get beyond the halfway, they're a seriously damaging unit from there on in. And they're probably playing the ball quicker into their forward yeah. like Those those marquee forwards are probably getting more of the ball than possibly the Canucklera lads are. Yeah, well, you'd, you'd have to say, you know, to me, Jordan Martin hasn't seen enough of the ball and he would Agreed. be a key, he would be a key Agreed, man for yeah. Granard. And uh, that, that's been a big factor. But, you know, great credit to... Uh, the Colossal Column crew they've maybe identified him you'd also have to say Tiernan Madden was a very strong performer in the opening quarter of this game all of a sudden he's had to mark Jack Bryant as uh, we see 19 coming in for 14 here so Dara Sheridan uh, they're taking him off and that's a, an interesting tactic now and, you know you have number 19 Matthew Shocknessy coming in there so obviously they're not taking a chance on uh, maybe Sheridan's yellow card or maybe they're looking for something different in the forwards now I, I think that's a retrograde move I have to be honest with you I think Sheridan has the potential to be one of their, their best match winners in fairness to him and I, 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 I'm not convinced that that's a good move on, on Ryan's behalf I have to say I thought he was doing alright unless they're afraid that he might pick up another yellow card and may, just, may not see out the game but I, I, I think at this stage with a five point gap between them I would have taken the chance Yeah I think I would have as well but uh, well the situation is is that they're trying something different they need a goal they really need a goal we've said it on a couple of occasions here and it's hard to see where that's going to come from with that Tullamore defence I have to be honest well you have uh, Oshin Keane and Martin doing a serious job now in back there helping out as well and you have a serious forward unit moving inside so as long as they don't let Granard get inside that 13 metre line Kalosha Cullum should be uh, winning this Leinster title oh that's a super work oh I think that's a little bit harsh on Keith O'Brien we've been very complimentary with Keith O'Brien so far but I think that's a little bit harsh I think he'd actually lost that ball out to come again Tullamore playing the ball that little bit quicker that little bit sharper that little bit better movement but I'm afraid that one has gone out over the end line or gone out over the sideline on the stand side of the pitch here free is going to be taken by Conor Leonard Mullen Octoman into Cunningham Cunningham the only Westmead man playing in his home pitch here lovely ball in over the top can anyone get a hand to it no no, the defender was actually running backwards and put Michael Feedy did a great job putting the forward off that time. I thought Brady was a cert to get that one, but Feeney just happened to get his something in the way. Anthony Lamb read that very well as well and got out behind it and swept it up and got the ball moving out the field. A collage to column now at the moment, uh, Paul. You know, 10 minutes, 11 minutes to go, but they seem to be playing with a little bit more ease and composure out there. Granard have to obviously force it now. 
I think composure is the word that they've, they've played with a little bit of composure at these lads young age it's very hard to get lads to, to stay focused on that game Granard are looking to try and get back into the game and they're not being let there's a lovely ball in out across the goals but it's easily dealt with Dara Madden he's had a decent game in goals in fairness for Granard now they've got to try and work this up they've got to try and get it into the forward line but as you said Killian a great remark made by you they're defending their full forward line is their first line of defence and there you go again Inter- intercepted again ball broken down out over the sideline been impressed with Emmett Curley since half time he you know, has got actually, enough yeah, had a dirty ball yeah dirty ball not, not you know uh, the stuff that, that goes unnoticed for a lot of the time but he has been there thereabouts when it, when it needs to be got there and there's a wonderful ball into Luke Egan Egan strikes it off his right and Luke Egan what has pulled it up over the bar that's a wonderful ball and it was a wonderful pass into him I think that was the corner forward Ushin Keenan actually passed that into him but that's a super, super score. But do you see the problem though for Granard there, Paul? It was like, you know, the parting of the sea. It was so open and Egan was all on his own just off the top of the D and had acres of space to be able to put that over the bar. And also had the right boot to put behind it as well in fairness to him. So here we are, 21 minutes into the final here in, in TEG Cusick Park. Galois to Cullum, Tullamore, 3-4. Nukwira from Granard, seven points after nearly burst from Granard to start of the second half. The goal has really, in my opinion, the goal has knocked the heart out of the Granard lads. And again, there's a simple free given away. Simple free, Colin Leonard picked it straight up off the ground. Well spotted by referee Keith O'Brien. Yeah, no, the goal after they worked so oh, hard. Oh, there's a great interception. Now, could this be the chance? Could this be the chance? Aaron Smith, Smith, shipping it out. Back it comes. In over the top, into Cunningham. Can Cunningham get there? He can't, unfortunately. It wasn't a great pass. It wasn't a great pass. Cunningham was free, but it was a poor pass to try and get it into him. And I think that was a good a good opportunity, in fairness, for the Canuck Wirral lads. That could have made a bit of a difference to it. It might have made a final for it. Yeah, just looking at the ball, you know, it was uh, turned over very, very well. Oh, good tackle brilliant there. turnover. Brilliant turnover by Aaron Smith. By Aaron Smith. And if Cunningham had got that ball, 2 on 1 would have slipped it maybe beyond the keeper then. Yeah, and it was probably one of the best players for Granard here in the Madden that chipped that pass and didn't get it right. But again, they're not giving up without a fight. You've got to give huge, huge pl- applause to uh, Canuck Wirra. The huge heart. They're not giving up. They're going at it. Still going at it. Drive the ball off the bar. I think that came off the bar and wide. He was going for goal. There's no doubt about it. He saw the onion bag and he was very ready, almost ready to peel it. He had nothing in his mind only to put that in the back of the net. Substitutions now on the Granard side. I think they're bringing on two substitutions. 23 is Rory Cochran. Rory Cochran is on. I think they have a second one on as well. Hard to, hard to see who's got number 12 has gone off. That's Aaron Smith. Again, I think that's a retrograde spent. I think he has possibly he has possibly the, one of their few chances. And the two wing half backs, or wing half forwards are gone. Mark O'Neill and Aaron Smith both replaced. Both replaced. Rory Cochran and Emmett Brady coming on replace the 10 and 12 so that's two and a half forward line gone Brady and Cochran on instead of them I, I, I think I would have left Aaron Smith on I think there's a little bit of a spark in him he, he has he has potential to be a, a match but then again that's gone over the top it's gone over everybody on. Sean Courtney Courtney flying through Courtney has he has he spotted the man outside he has it's back to Courtney Courtney bang there it goes Game over. Game over. That was a super move created and finished by Sean Courtney. No doubt about it. He shipped it on beautifully to Bryant. Bryant back to him. And it came from a ball that was dropped at the centre of the field. A fourth goal. A fourth goal for Kalash to call him out as Moore. The problem with that one. Great kick by Anthony Lamb, but it went through the hands of Connor Leonard. Standing right behind him was, of course, the number 10, Courtney. Went on the run. Little pass with Jack Bryant, and he stuck it in the top corner of the net. They've taken their chances when it comes to the goals. Colossal Column have taken it, and now, to me, would be fully deserving winners of this. I, I think there's no doubt about that. I think they've been, they've been, they've, they've, their goal chances alone have been well worth the admission money here. Some of them have been excellent. They've got four goals. Three, one of them was a little bit fortunate the other three were excellent goals 
but that was the pick of the four in my opinion he, he started the play he finished the play and it was a wonderful wonderful finish again a little bit unfortunate uh, Paul on Granard in that they had pushed up because they wanted to try and win that kick out and make a charge up the field and it was a four on three situation then and with the speed that Courtney was going through it it was going to be very very hard to stop then I, I, I think it was unstoppable I don't think the goalie had any chance there whatsoever I think if, if he saw it going by him I'd say that was the height of it he was a bit of a spectator yeah, I th- there was no doubt on that one. I don't think any keeper uh, would have been able to claim it. No, I agree with you. When Barry got Allerson in from Liverpool, but <laughs> I don't think he would have got even a hand to that. Granard still fighting towards the last. Five minutes to go here, just a little over five minutes plus additional time. 4-4 four, four to Collage to Cullum. Seven points, a knock on, but again, again, Killian, it's in the finishing third that Granard have struggled to be quite honest with you yeah it just it, it, but isn't it amazing Paul how they just seem so fluid in the opening 10 minutes maybe of both halves and then all of a sudden when Kalosh the column got a score and it just happened to be a goal both times it just seems to have knocked ultimately the stuffing out of them and the decisions that they made in the opening 10 minutes of each of each half all of a sudden just disappear on them and you know again like that kind of a hopeful ball rather than something that had a little bit of purpose on it I suppose one of the things here of COVID is we can hear the announcement that the people just not to just congregate that, on Jeff. the field. You just know? Heard that. It's, it's going to be it's going to be hard to police that one. I'm thinking. Of course, Colossia Cullum won the South Leinster last year, lost out in the uh, Leinster semi final, and uh, you know have gone one step closer in winning this. I know there's only I think four, and probably uh, Kieran Dolan was involved last year as well. He unfortunately with that neck injury not able to participate in senior football this year but uh, I'm sure they'll have a medal for him and I just spotted going down by us there a few minutes ago uh, poor old Harry Plunkett picked up the ankle injury during the week and unfortunately not able to line out here today in the Leinster final ball in towards the square but it's that man again Luke Geegan is there, is there a blade of grass Killian on the pitch that he hasn't covered? well I was going to say to you he probably hadn't been inside the 13 metre line and then he did that so there you go <laughs> yeah but it's at the opposite end <laughs> yeah yeah and, and I have to say and I have to say in in as a Westmead man, it's good to see Offaly football coming back up again. People think that there's a bit of a rival between Westmead and Offaly, which there is. But I, it's always nice to have a healthy rivalry when two teams are going well. And it's good to see Offaly football back in again. Cunningham! Cunningham oh, with a goal! Great goal! Cunningham with a goal! Well, he, he's, he's, threatened, he's threatened a couple of times in fairness to Mark Cunningham. The only Westmead man on the pitch has eventually got a goal for Canuck Wera Granard. Mark Cunningham and it was a fine finish he shipped the ball on for the initial pass and was there to take the return I think look Colossia Cullum they're probably guilty of overdoing it overplaying it probably it was actually a great interception that time Kaelin O'Reilly did a, made a great interception on it it was number 22 it was one of the subs that gave it back to him yeah, Cun- Emmett Brady and Brady gave it back to Cunningham and Cunningham made absolutely no mistake he's a fine hurler as well this Aaron Cunningham fella well I suppose he can I, you know he's dragging his team back into it here but there's still six points with uh, a couple of minutes remaining here I, I think it's a little bit too much I think it's a yeah. bridge too far but uh, you know he's got a goal in the Leinster final here on his home pitch is there a last kick is there a last kick in Granard it's that man Cunningham as well in fairness to him on a losing side, he has had a tremendous... Oh, here we go, game. though. Here we go. It's wide open here, though. Four. Oh, that's a poor, poor pick up of the ground. Jordan Martin had a chance, but he's got it back somehow. Lovely flick up into the hands. Jordan Martin. Oh, no, I needed and that. he's absolutely wasted a great chance here. But it's knocking out. It's knocking out. Could it be second goal for... Oh, there's a penalty. Must be a penalty. No, he's not giving it. Is he giving it? Is he not? He's going to the um, no. He's going to talk to the umpires. Oh, I think that's a that's a bit of a cop out, Keith. I have to be honest. I think it's either a penalty or it's not, and I think it's a penalty, Killian. Well, again, it came out of very little. Um, a high I, ball in that just I simply thought Jordan, wasn't Edward. I thought Jordan Martin should have played it to Brady initially, and then he kicked that high ball. And he's given a goal. It actually went the ball to see if Dudge by he's the given umpires, a goal. and it went over the line down there. And so it's Carmack Brady with the goal, I think. This is some finish. 2-7 to Canuck, we're a Granard. 4-4 to Tullamore. 
16 points to 13. We said game over. <laughs> Are we heading for extra time? Me throat won't be able for it. <laughs> is any, any pub open? Is there a pub open that the lad could get a drink or something? A bottle of water would be a great joke at this dude because there's very little of the voice left. This has been a super finish. Cunningham has, has sparked something, but again, it's gone back over the top. Can anybody get it from Canuck Quarry? Yes, they can. It's gone to substitute. Substitute Rory Cocker. Rory Cochran. Cochran is fouled. There's only a kick of the ball in the game, Killian. Where did this come out of? Yeah, I just I, I just think they might have been guilty of maybe they thought like us that the game was over. They just maybe defensively uh Kalosha Cullum just you know, just switched down a notch I'd say. Um, you know, I don't think I, I would have been talking about Anthony Lamb as a man that was in the running for, you know, being one of the top players out there. Wouldn't have covered himself in glory, maybe that the way things were dealt with there. Um, I think they switched off when they thought, I think they thought that ball was gone wide, the Jordan Martin high ball in, and maybe, you know, just flick the switch off, and, uh, you know, all of a sudden the goal is in the, the ball to the back of the net. And in fairness, huge credit, huge credit to uh, Knock and Granard. They really, really have. Come back all of us from the dead. We were writing them off here a couple of minutes ago. But this game is not over. And no, again, they're on the attack again. again. Could they get a third goal? They're trying to get it through. He's still in possession. Out it comes. Clash to call him. Battling for the battling for the survival almost here. Again, when it's lost, that's great defending. That's great defending. You've got to say that. Nobody was there to take the pass. Clash to call him. Oh, it out. But again, it's, it's a great interception. Cahill Gilligan unfortunate though just out over the line on the far side it's all of whatever now Keith O'Brien plays though we're into the first minute of added time it depends on what he's going to play there was the water break of course but I think that was a chance if Kalukwara could have moved it just that little bit faster they might have got it oh that's a bit of a hospital pass but Oh, and they've got it back, and he's given a free against him. Oh, oh, that's, oh a, that's, that's a tight. <laughs> that's a tight decision. We've 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 lauded Keith O'Brien here on that one, but I think that was shoulder to shoulder, Killian. Oh, that's tight now. Jack Bryan coming out with the ball, he coughed that up, and there was again another oh, bit of an overlap here. But Kalosha Column, all of a sudden, no one really looking for the ball. It's squeaky bum time, as Alex Ferguson said. There's a lot of squeaky bums out there. We have enough toilet paper in the country with the COVID-19 crisis at the moment. And oh, it's a sorry, line ball. Oh. It's a line ball. This has to go in. This has to go into full forward. Quillen O'Reilly is standing on the edge of the square. And he's absolutely begging for the ball to be kicked in on top of him. If somebody can kick it in that far. But instead they're going backwards. That's a sub we haven't got that's come in here for Colossal. Matthew Shock to see a Mostrom man. An Edgerstown man. They can't afford to lose the ball though. That's the only thing. In it goes again. We still have a chance. We still have a chance. We're still there. In it goes. Cornerback. Oh, Shot. Dangerous into ball. The ball. Into the ball. Good goalkeeping. Good goalkeeping by Lamb and he's fouled. No question about that. Square ball. Square ball. But as you know, wet conditions out, Paul. Anything could happen. Oh, you know, a ball goes in like it that was, and it just could go anywhere. It was an absolute Euro Millions lottery. That's exactly what it was. Tiernan Madden tried to kick the ball in. Couldn't get nothing out of it. Kalosha Cullen badly need to get up this uh, the apartment end of uh, TG Cusick Park here. Jack Bryan playing as an emergency. Jack Bryan playing as an emergency corner back at the moment. And that's how it is at the moment. I think that's a line ball. It's, I think that's a line ball to Granard. James McGrath made the call there. We can't argue with him. <laughs> Brian Cody tried to argue with him for years and got not now. So he's not going to get out now. Of, of, of a, a college player is certainly not going to get out now. James, of course, principal out in Castle Pollard here, just out the road from us, which would be not too far away from, from Granard. They would be near enough neighbours. Granard just kept that though a little bit too tight to the sideline and uh, it they worked did. its and way again, out. And again, having put the, put the full forward in there, my opinion is they should have tried maybe to try and get that ball in as quickly as possible as they can to kill and O'Reilly. Get in around him. He is a big man. He has that strength. Trying to slow up the game. Close to column are panicking, Killian. I think they're panicking terribly. And again... They need someone just to get their hands on the ball and get it out of this situation. This might be the man, though. Cormac Egan. Line ball, line ball to Close to column. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Down he goes. He's looking for the sympathy time on. He's claiming a head injury. If it is, it's only to his hair. It must be the gel fell out of his hair because he certainly wasn't injured in that one. 
Well, the man is t- suffering cramp at the moment. I think oh, he's a star man I out don't there blame today. Him. I don't blame him. He's had a tremendous game for Clash to call him. Dangerous ball now. Dangerous ball. It's that man again, look, Fox. Look, he was the far pulled. side. He has a man over the far side. He doesn't see him. He's wasting time, is he? No, the referee is going back. He did that free. very well. It was a free. There's no question in my mind. His, jer- his jersey was pulled. Well spotted by Keith. Well, Michael Fox might be one of the younger lads. I think he's due to be on the team again next year. Um, you know, he, he, a, a guy that probably can't get his start on the team. But since he came in, you know, his movement inside the forwards, he created a lovely goal. Couldn't agree with you more. And then wins that free there. Couldn't and that's an important free to win. I couldn't agree with you more. He's been a, he's been a definite an asset to the, that Tullamore side. He's been excellent when, since his introduction at halftime. And there I goes think, the insurance. Think that's it. Yeah. There goes the insurance. A point that time, Sean Courtney. Sean Courtney. We're, we're with no doubt about it now I think we can call it five minutes into at a time and there it goes there it goes there goes the final whistle Kalash to Colum Tullamore our Leicester Senior B champions got college level 4-5 to 2-7 for Canuck Wera Granard a valiant effort from the Longford men but the trophy is heading back towards Tullamore I think it's been an excellent game, a more than excellent game here in absolutely trying conditions on a slippery pitch. My man of the match, I have to say, if I was to give it, I'd give it to Luke Egan. He was listed at full forward for Kalash to Column, but I think he covered every blade of grass on the Cusick Park pitch today. I would just give it ahead to him. And Anthony Lamb would, for Tullamore would have it gone again. Maybe Cormac Egan as well. They all gave great displays. The back line, Aaron Flanagan at full back had a tremendous game for Colossia Column as well. On the Canuck Wirrus side, very, very hard on the likes of Mark Cunningham, I think has been exceptional. The only Westmead man in his home pitch today. I thought Mark Cunningham was exceptional. I thought Caelan O'Reilly, when he went in full forward, caused a bit of damage. Brian Masterson had had a decent game. Keen O'Reilly. Dara Madden couldn't be faulted for any of the goals, maybe. He was blindsided for one of them, but the other three he had absolutely no chance in. Michael Hines came in patches, but I'm afraid that was the story for Grander. They only played in patches, Killian. Yeah, and uh, you know the opening ten, you know it's, uh, seven to ten minutes of uh, both halves they were, and then you know credit to them, uh, probably because Kalasha Column took the foot off the gas a little bit, they came strong then uh, towards the end there with those uh, couple of goals. But um, I just felt Kalasha Column just probably had that little bit more. I, I don't know nuance let's say of being yeah. able to just see it out I know, I know and that exactly was what like. you mean they just had that little bit of craft where they were what did it take them as long to get the scores as it was taken or were not taking, working as hard to get the scores as Canuck where it was Granard had to work so much harder for the scores because of that tight defence and I think that played a key role in it yeah, but if you win, four, if you win a match scoring four goals, you know if you're scoring those amount of goals, like you're going to win, you're going to win the game. I think ultimately, um, the only thing is maybe from a Colossian column point of view is that they didn't seem to threaten, you know, too many of taking opportunities, you know, uh, scoring points. Like there's a, it's a low enough point tally, but you know, credit to them. I think it was a cracking enough encounter here. Um, you feel for Granard because I do think that they they tried work diligently out there. I just think the craft and the maybe a little bit more skill was on the. Colossus Column side and the Egan's to me yeah. series crew Agreed. but I'd have to say Courtney Oshin Keane and Martin Emmett Curley thought they worked very very hard especially second half and your man in the match Killian who would you give it to I, I would be thinking Cormac Egan just maybe because he knitted I know Luke covered a serious amount of ground as well it's between either one of them uh, I, I, I'd have to say I just thought Cormac though on occasion was uh, covering a serious amount of ground I, I, I think it's a toss up between either one of them here uh, uh, yeah. ultimately yeah I, I would agree with that and I have to give an honourable mention to Michael Fox the substitute that came in at half time for Kalash to call him at the end of the day, it's nine scores apiece, but the four goals are what made it. The four goals are what made it for Kalash to call him. We're almost ready here now for the presentation here. Kalash to call him. Co-captains here are Jack Bryant and Oshin Keenan. The two corner forwards are going to accept the trophy here on behalf of their school, their clubs and their county. A Shamrocks man from Pula and a Tullamore man. And there it is. There it is. The Senior B title is heading to Tullamore. The Leinster Senior B title is heading to Tullamore. Unfortunately for the lads, there will be no All-Ireland series this time. But that will matter little for the Gloucester Column boys. It's all about winning.
We're just going to have a look at a few of the highlights here now, lads. First highlight of the game. This again, we've said it on a couple of occasions. Karma Keegan, the little flick up, head up, looked away straight away. Saw Luke on the edge of the on the edge of the forty. He soloed through, bang missed, bang goal. It was a little bike pinball there for a couple of seconds, but he kept his composure and slotted it to the back of the net. Lovely finish for Colossia Collins' first goal. The game really turned, in my opinion, at this stage was just shortly after that. There was a goal chance, a penalty from Michael Fowler, Michael Hines. He took the penalty himself. In my opinion, there was no doubt about it. I think the referee had a great game, I have to be honest. Everybody makes a few mistakes. Hines, Hines will be kicking himself tonight that he didn't probably get the, the, the goal here. But he scuffed this badly and it dribbled poorly wide. It was a poor penalty kick, it has to be said. And, you know, these things happen in games. It's tough on the lads. It's tough on them because they were so strong in it. This is the second goal. The Colossia Column second goal. This is the freak goal. High ball in. It came in. Kyle Ryan totally deceived the Canuck World goalkeeper Darren Madden, possibly because there was a corner forward in there. But that was a bit of a freak goal. But it put them in the ascendancy coming up towards the half time whistle. This is a Granard now. This was the save that went across the goals and was fouled on the ground. That was a great chance. Ball was kept in play. But that was a super save by the goalkeeper, it has to be said. Kept him in the game. I think this is the third goal, I think, for Colossal. This is the banger. This was an absolutely courtly with the third goal. It, it was a super, super finish. Great work up along the side. And it actually started with a move by Cormac Egan. This is Tullamore's fourth goal now. This again was a super. Again, the seas just parted. Sean Courtney came through. Played it in, got it back, and back it in it. Wonderful, wonderful finish. It was a super finish for them. It was actually Michael Fox got the third goal. I beg your pardon. He came on as a sub. There was no coming back, in, my, in our opinion, at that stage. But what a fight Canuck were put up. Great disposition. Cunningham, who had an absolutely terrific game, shipped the ball on and was ready to take it back. You can see him with the hand up there, ready to get it. And he made absolutely no mistake when he got the chance. Second goal came from... It, we thought it was going to be a penalty. It actually didn't turn out to be a penalty. And the goal was given. And the goal was given that time. Car McBrady. High ball in. Looked like there was no danger to it. But the, the midfielder that started playing at full forward for the second half, Caelan O'Reilly, somehow got the ball back into play. He got the back up into Brady. Brady got the goal. At that stage, there was only three points in it. But a late, late score from Sean Courtney put the game out of sight I think the referee probably made the right decision on that he probably made the right decision to allow the goal be given but it's been a tremendous game here in TG Cusick Park it's been a pleasure here to be at it the first game we've streamed here live from Cusick Park on the new system on Airby TV and it's been an excellent it's been an excellent afternoon thoroughly enjoyable many thanks many thanks to Killian, my co-commentator here uh, hard luck a sincere hard look to Canuckwer and Granard. They cannot say that they didn't leave it behind them because they put everything into it. But today belongs to Colosh the Column, Astulloch Moore, the Leinster Senior B Can champions. You can hear me there, yeah? Can you hear me on the microphone? Paul, do you, you want to come down here, Paul? Paul, you want to come down? You come down, Paul. Uh, we also like to thank the 
no particular order. The sport of the clubs, the Farr family from Captain Farr, Niall Bryant and Paul Lamb for going out. The ball got the arm, 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 the ball Captain of Kanashta, Colin Ross Tullamore, uh, Carmack Egan. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful day for you. It's been a long while, four months in the waiting, but has it been worth the wait, Colin? Yeah, it has been. Like, years were, were work now. It's just gone into this. And days there with Niall and the boys, it's just been unbelievable. Like, it's not the work they've put in for us. It's just, like, we were playing schools in under 14 or 16, we had no work put in with us. And then these boys come in, and it just means, it means the world, like, what they've put into us and what they've done for us. And uh, we're just forever grateful, you know. And a huge shot in the arm for awfully football as well. In fairness, uh, it's been under this microscope for the last little while. And, and to win something, it doesn't matter what, what it is, to win a, a, a Leinster title at any grade is a wonderful one. Yeah, like, we need it now. Like, we've been struggling the last few years, and this is just the boost we need. And hopefully we can push on now, put a few good teams together and push on the championship, hopefully. And celebrate, celebrations will be muted tonight, Karma, because of the COVID-19, I presume? <laughs> ah, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. We'll, we'll social distance anyway. <laughs> Your social dishes would only tell of you together and you leave, yeah, you, you leave mail each other and you'll be on WhatsApp with each other afterward. Yeah, we'll, we'll work it out somewhere. <laughs> Colm, it's been a pleasure. Great game of football. Congratulations, Colossa Colm. Congratulations to your school and your county. Well done and congratulations once more. Thanks. Well done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Doolan here, just signing off from Cusick Park on what has been a wonderful, wonderful game of football. 4-5 to Kalash to Cullum, 2-7 to Canuck Wirra from Granard. It's been a wonderful day's football, but the plot is must go to Kalash to Cullum from uh, Tullamore. Signing off. Thank you very much and the best of luck. Excellent.